Hello, everyone, and welcome to the um, July uh, I2B2 Transmart Foundation training. Uh, today, we've got Mike Mendes, who's going to be presenting on ontology for, for beginners in I2B2. Um, as usual, this is being recorded, and it will be available on our YouTube channel and also on our website uh, later this week. So with that, I'll turn it over to Mike. Thanks, Rudy. And thanks everyone for joining. Um, <clears throat> so I also want to thank uh, Sean and Laurie because a lot of these uh, screens or the presentation is really from them. So I want to give credit to them. Uh, okay, so um, it's going to be broken down to kind of like three different sections. Uh, the main, like the first one will be about like the I2B2 ontology and how it's structured. Um, and then there'll be a section on uh, how to expand using other ontologies from the bio ontology and then some tool uh, to update the ontology. Um, so let's get started. So the, uh, so the I2B2 ontology is broken into like two different sections. You have the data model, which has um, the concept representation, the values and modifiers. And then you have the metadata, which contains like the concept that defines the concepts, defines the values, and defines the uh, modifiers. So there's two different data, uh, like two different sections. One is the actual data, which has all of the the data with the concept associated to that data, like uh, hypertension, like ICD-10, uh, 54 um, would be like say diagnosis for hypertension. But then you have the ontology, which would be uh, the ontology for it, and then what, what's the name associated in what children are underneath it and what parents are part of it. Okay. Um, so, like I mentioned earlier, uh, so you have the um, you have the facts, which define the data, and then you have the dimensional tables, like the patient dimension and the concept dimension, which is the metadata. And then you also have a visit dimension for um, uh, encounters in base. So the ITP2, the star schema, which is represented here, uh, contains um, six main tables. So you have the observation facts, which has like the patient number, the encounter number, the concept, which we'll go in detail over, and then the observer, which is kind of like the provider ID. The date that it start, the, this concept was, uh, the modifier, if this has modifiers, which we'll go in briefly, uh, and then the instance num. So the instance num, um, if the record, if like, let's say you had a lab report, and then they had to update that lab report for some reason, uh, the you'd have two records in the observation fact, and one would have an instance number of one, and the, the updated one would have an instance number of two. Uh, because all of these are in the primary key, uh, primary key, that's why you have to have an instance num. Because in the, the val type, uh, the end val, like let's say it was uh, um, uh, a lab test uh, <clears throat> that had a numeric value, you'd have the end val in here. Uh, and so, so then. <clears throat> In the patient dimension table, we have the main primary key is the patient number, which is associated to this. So you have one patient to many observation facts. And then you can have other data associated to it, like birth date, death date, uh, rental status, and such. And then the same with the visit dimension. You have one visit associated to mo multiple different observation facts. And, and so you could have many to many of the observers, and then the modifier can have many to many. Uh, the concepts, uh, like we can have many to many in that. So, uh, let me just see if there's any questions. Okay. Uh, so, some examples of some types of ITV2 facts is such so as like diagnosis and procedures. They can be like uh, C CPT codes, they could be ICD 9, ICD 10. You can have health uh, data, uh, health history data, genomic data, um, lab data, whether it's uh, the local codes or it could be uh, a loin <clears throat> provider, 
demographic data, which is usually in the uh, patient dimension, uh, but doesn't necessarily have to be. And then you have the patient records. Um, these are, could be notes, they could be pathology, and you know, other such. And all of these would have an ontology associated to them. And so, yeah, so as we mentioned earlier, this is kind of the breakdown of the observation fact table where you have the patient number, the encounter, associated to the visit, and then the concept and the provider, the thought modifier, and things like that. And so then in more detail, so you have the VAL type CD. So this just, uh, describes how that uh, observation fact is represented. So if, it's, if the VAL type CD has an N in it, it means it's numeric. If it has a T, it means it's a text value. So in the text value, uh, it would be, the text value would actually be in the T VAL pair. And if it was an N, it would be in the N VAL pair, okay? Um, So, and then, uh, actually, uh, yeah. The t uh, so, yeah, so if the other thing it, that gets a little confusing is if the n valve type is an N, then the t valve can actually have other things in it. It could be E for equals, G for gr uh, greater than, or L for less than. So it represents how that t valve is. Um, and then you have the value flag for high, low values, okay? And then the observation blob has text value, uh, like text documents or it could be no, or like whole notes or other type of uh, things that exceed the, uh, I think it's like the 300 characters that the T valve can be. So the style scheme is just one of the fact tables of the many dimensional tables. The concepts in these Tables is defined in a separate metadata table, which we'll go into detail. Um, and so then the metadata is you can represent in a in the ontology tree, where you can go down, um, go up and down the ontology. And likewise, as you can have uh, observation facts that associate to uh, uh, diagnosis procedures, the same is said about the metadata, because without the metadata, you wouldn't be able to query any of the data in the ITB2 structure. Okay, so, so now that we've talked a lot about the metadata, this kind of gives you a visual representation of how the ontology would be broken down. So, under, so this is um, an ICD-9 uh, ontology, we have diseases and injuries, and then within diseases and in injuries, there's multiple different children, certain conditions, diseases of blood, diseases of circulatory systems. Um, and then underneath the circulatory systems, uh, you have acute re 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 fever as another child. And as you notice, all of these kind of have a picture of a, a folder with a eyeglass. It means that those are folders that you can open up. Um, if it just has a picture of a document with an eyeglass, then it means it's a child, and then there's no other children, there's no, you cannot go further down in anatology. So that's why these, I'm sorry, sorry, these two, uh, the acute but ill-defined uh, cerebral disease is a child, but yet the late effects of cerebral about, uh, disease is also a folder un underneath that one. So th you could click on that and then get further uh, child notes from, from that. Okay. So this, uh, so <clears throat> within the uh, ontologies um, in the ITB2 where you have like the diagnosis procedures, uh, medications, each one of those is represented in the table access. And then in the table access, it represents what the C full name is going to be, so that when you create creating queries, uh, uh, it needs to know, like, uh, I'll show you in a little bit, but how it's represented. It also has the C name, which represents what the visual uh, representation of it is going to be. 
and then that uh, C table name, which represents where which table in the database um, the, these ontologies are going to be. So in this example, all of these ontologies from de demographics all the way down to vital visit dimensions are all within the ITB2 uh, table. While the custom metadata is in the custom meta table, while the burn is under the burn table. And so in order for it to show on the uh, categories page or the main uh, ontology, it needs to be within the table axis. Okay, so building the, uh, the metadata, so uh, as this represents, it's saying that the, the, ta the, the in the blue, it's the table, uh, I table CD, which is ITV2 diagnosis, and then the C full name, which is ITV2 diagnosis. So when the ontology gets this, it's going to look at this ITV2 die, it's going to look at the table access and find out which table it represents. And in this case, it would represent the ITV2 table. And so then it would also uh, use the ITV2 diagnosis um, when it does a query within that ITV2 table. So, so the metadata, so each of the metadata tables are identical. They're, they all have like the CH level, the full name, synonym, visual attributes. The CH level represents the, uh, how it's represented um, in the ontology, whether it's a child node of a, of a parent. So the first uh, CH level would be like zero, then you have one for anything underneath that, like, uh, in the diseases and diagnosis that we're looking at, uh, circulatory systems I think would be like a CH level of two because the parent would be the diseases, and then the level zero would be uh, a, uh, would be the diagnosis. So in the metadata, you have the C. So the, the each there'd be an entry for each of the ontology records. And so underneath that, you have like the C full name, which would be like uh, circulatory system. I'm, I'm sorry, I take that back. The C full name would be the full ontology string, like slash, go to the next screen, I think it'll represent, yeah. Uh, so the CH level, so the C full name would be like slash uh, RPDR lab test, or it could be like slash ITB2 underscore di diag slash diagnosis. The C name, would be the name representing that. And then the C visual attributes is how it's represented. So F means it's a folder. And then for a child, it's C. And then the other thing is after that is A, which means it's active. Or you can have H, which is hidden. So it, would, uh, it wouldn't show up in the ontology. And then after that, if it has an E at the end of it, it means it's editable. Okay, so in this example right here, this is all of the ones that are with showing everything that has a CH level of one. And so this is that, that ontology. Okay. And so underneath that ontology, anything that has a CH level of two would be represented in here. And so under demographics, you have age, gender, language, marital status, et cetera. And then under diagnosis, you um, if uh, anything that has CH level of two, such as circulatory systems or uh, digestive system, et cetera, would have uh, would be represented in here, so that it would show in that ontology. And, and likewise, you can have a CH level of three, which would be underneath the circulatory systems, or it could be under the digestive systems if there was a CH level of three. And so now we're going to talk a little about C full name and then the name and then the C base code. Okay, so the C full name shows as so so RPDR diagnosis right. Sorry, I RPDR diagnosis would be like the CH level of one and then CH level of two would be RPDR diagnosis uh, muscular and connection tissues seven ten all the way up to 719. 
And then CH level three would just be the next up to uh, that other slash right before the 7140. And then the CH, so one, two, three. So the CH level four would be at the very end of that. And so, uh, so the C name represents the name of that uh, entry. The C full name is what's used in the query so that it can get all the children underneath that when a query is run. Uh, and so then the C base code is the, it's mapped to the concept CD. So that's the one thing to keep in mind is in the ontology, it's called C base code, but in the CRC, it's called the concept CD. Um, it's one of those quirks that we've had since the beginning. I wish that they were the same, but unfortunately, <laughs> It's, they're not. So, um, so the C base code uh, in, in these examples right here of gender, um, it represents um, like a local code, but the C base code could easily be like an ICD-9 code or it could be a, uh, could be a CPT code or likewise. Um, and so the synonym and then the visual attributes which kind of talked a little bit about, but the main ones for the first character is the folder and the leaf. The F and the L are the main ones that were uh, typically used. Uh, the container and multiple uh, leave to another talk just to get, get more complicated. Uh, but the second character, like I mentioned, so you can have active or inactive or hidden. Okay, typically it's active or uh, hidden. Uh, inactive isn't used that often, uh, but it could be. Uh, and then so the next complicated thing, so the seed metadata XML. So some of the ontology they can drag over, like for example, ha like labs could have a value associated to it. And so when you do the query, you can associate like, um, if you want, wanted to know uh, uh, the blood sugar of less than 10, then you need to represent that when you drag that ontology item over, whether it can uh, take some numeric value, whether it takes a text value, what are the highs and lows for that? And all of that is represented in the metadata XML. So this is, and the metadata XML is an XML uh, structure and it contains the following XML structure, where it has the units, the normal units, the equals, conversion. Um, whether so, you could have accept the value like in say kilogram, but then you want to convert it to pounds. So that's where the conversion units would uh, take place. As how how is a conversion done between kilograms and pounds? Uh, whether it has enumerated values in it, and if it does, and here are the enumerated values. Uh, if the value, like for example, lab has a low value, so you can have the low of low, high of low, low of high, and high of high. And so next, uh, and so a little bit in detail of it. So the data type can be, it could be a positive, like all positive integers, it could be just all integers. It could be a positive float, or it could be a, a just a, a regular float which has a negative value. It can have enumerated values or string values. Uh, string values could be used in the genomic data and such. Um, so, uh, and then you can have like whether except like a low, normal, high, abnormal, and toxic. Um, I'm enjoying your time. Okay. Um, so when I ha when you're using the uh, integer floats or positive a positive integer positive floats, you can specify like the normal units, uh, the equal units, uh, and then when you need to do any type of conversion, such as from feet to yards, then the multiplying factor would, factor would be 0.333, uh, and then you can also have Excluding units. I know, I'm kind of going over some of this a little quickly, but 
Uh, the recording saved, and plus a lot of this, uh, there's a lot of material, so I'm trying to get it all done in one hour. Um, okay, so next stage. Uh, and so then the enumerated values, uh, so that could be, uh, if you were doing a pathology report, you could do, uh, maybe you're interested in just doing queries of like uh, organs such as like the brain, uh, liver, uh, kidneys, et cetera. And so the enumerated value would have those key, key names. In. Okay. Uh, and then you can also specify how long the length of string uh, that could be queried can be. Um, we, we also have, uh, for more information on this, uh, metadata XML, you can go to this website and read up more about it. Uh, oh. uh, so yeah, so the C metadata XML is in the metadata table. It's not in the observation fact table, okay? Um, because it would represent any of the facts for that ontology. So we put it into the metadata one. Um, and so this kind of gives you a little uh, idea of what a, the representation would be. I can show uh, after this uh, on the ITB2 website, dragging a, a lab over that we have. So in this case, we dragged over calcium. And so the calcium uh, has a numeric value. And so in this, you can say it's greater than 10.6. And the unit is uh, milligrams per deciliter, okay? And so this whole thing of this uh, greater than uh, numeric value and the units are all represented in the metadata XML. And so when the uh, work branch of the web client sees a, val sees a value in the metadata XML, it would then pop up this uh, display so that the users can enter in what they want for that value. Okay, uh, so as we mentioned, we have the ability to do the conversion from units from whether it's uh, milliliters to liters or whether it's from kilograms to, uh, to pounds. But in order to uh, do this, you need to enter a field into the C cell params, uh, basically it's telling the CRC that it needs to do the conversion. And so it's basically an, an entry, it just says CRC enable unit CD conversion, and you just say on as a value. So this would be in the project management uh, uh, database in the PM cell params. And then the CRC would uh, see this when it does a query, and then it would do the conversion on the fly. Okay, and so this kind of gives a, a, a some values in the ITB2 data model uh, for the various different. Uh, mm -hmm. What was this table? Uh, okay. Yes, yeah, so this is a metadata one, and it has the unit CVs. Okay, so so modifiers. So another tricky thing. Uh, so, so you have regular ontology items, such as like ICD-9s or SNOMEDs or CPT codes. But for example, say you have a medication, and so you have the medication, uh, Tylenol, uh, but then with under the uh, Tylenol, you can actually have uh, how, would it, how, is it, how is it taken, uh, like is it orally taken as a pill or is it injected as an IV? How, um, what's the dose of it? Uh, 100 milligrams or is it 50 milligrams? And then frequency of uh, how often is it taken? Twice a day, once a day, uh, uh, 300 pill, uh, like 30 pills, etc. So that's where the modifiers come in. So you can have the main item, Tylenol, but then you can have a modifier for that. And so the modifier would be the dose, frequency, and route associated to that. And so in the um, ontology, there's a modifier CD. Actually, no. In the, um, 
in the observation of fact, there'd be a modifier of CD. And then in the modifier of CD, for in this example of aspirin, you would have uh, four records. The first one would be just the aspirin with uh, an at as a modifier CD, and then three other uh, mod. Then then you have your modifiers such as dose, which is saying uh, 320 milli uh, most likely milligrams, and then the frequency. Uh, we'll see in a second what QD represents, and then the route, which is uh, PO, which is all, and so. You can have all three, or you can have just a couple of them, or just, or just none of them. But this, in this fact, it shows that this person had taken aspirin, um, and that dose was 320, and then the frequency and the route. Uh, they could have another entry where they have a different dose, a frequency and a route. So it's still the same aspirin. It's just that um, they just have different doses and different frequencies. So it's a way of kind of expanding the ontology through, uh, without having an entry for each one. So the other way around it would be to say, okay, you have aspirin, dose 23, frequency, route, and that would be associated to some, some concept CD. And then you have another concept CD, which would have like the dose of 83, frequency, et cetera. And so in the medication, uh, with medications, you would have like hundreds of thousands of concepts for the tens of, tens of, uh, tens of thousands of medications. In this case, we just have 10,000 medications, and then we have all the different modifiers for those uh, medications. So, and so... So next in the metadata XML, we'll talk a little bit about uh, the fact table, the column, column name, and operator and DIM code. Okay. So within the ontology, it needs to know like where where in the CFC is this data represented? Because uh, when ITP2 was kind of developed, each cell uh, could not access each other cell's database. And so when it's, when we did queries on the CRC, we needed to know all of the children associated to that concept, if there were children. Like if it was a folder, what are all the children underneath it? And if it was, uh, if it, or it may have been just a leaf. So in this example, say uh, someone dragged over this RPDI demographics gender and ran a query, we, wouldn't, we would want to know all of the children underneath that. So that would include female, male, unknown, uh, unknown with an at, and unknown with a u. And so the CRC has a table called the concept dimension, which basically has this DIM code in it. And then the, uh, us, um, which is not represented in here, but also the C base code or the concepts. So what it would do is when, you, when, when it did the query, it would drag, it would, uh, query the concept dimension, and then figure out all of the concepts associated to that. And so, for example, it might be like F and M and U, okay, and then at and a U, or unknown U. Uh, so in those concepts, so in the observation, it would then drag, figure out anyone that had like a concept code of F or concept code of male, the unknown, and the unknown at and U. And so this is what would be in the concept dimension. So that's why in the metadata, it needs to know like what uh, where in the uh, CRC's database um, which table to look at. So typically these are all the same. It's usually concept CD as a column, uh, concept dimension, and the concept path. Uh, so the concept path would represent uh, like this path, uh, PDI demographics gender. Concept CD would represent the concepts associated. So in this, it would be like M or M, uh, F or M for male or female, or it could be an ICD-9 or ICD-10 code. Uh, <clears throat> these can also be like for the patient dimension table, which I'll uh, talk about in a second. I think it's the next screen. Uh, so the other thing, so in here, like it has a patient, uh, 
dimension table. It's saying, okay, so instead of querying the observation fact, we're going to query the patient dimension table. And so in there, we care about the patient number. And then we're, for this uh, zero to nine age, we're going to uh, query the birth date. And so <clears throat> this is where you can actually put in SQL into the CDIM code. So I think this is SQL Server. Uh, it's either SQL Server or Oracle, but I'm pretty sure it's SQL Server. So we'll go with that. So what it's saying is, okay, <clears throat> the current date, which today, so July 30th, 2018, what we want to do is we want to minus 365 and a half days times 10. So that's how that's how you get the the date. So the select thing would say select patient number. Patient num from patient dimension where the birth date is between the cis date of 318 and the cis date of uh, 316, uh, 2510. Um, so, yeah, so the get date is all, these should have been uh, get, this should have been get date. Uh, this day uh, should have been get date. Uh, one is used in Oracle, one is used in SQL. So, but you get the idea is that this is how you can uh, query on someone's age when you know the birth date, but then you're using the system to query on the current date. Okay. And so, um, so a little bit about the, so those two approaches to doing uh, some of the demographics. You can either put it in the observation fact table, or you can actually put it in the patient dimension table. Um, I, for stuff like birth date and death date, I typically put them in the patient dimension table. Um, marital status, for example, you could have, uh, you could put that in the observation fact. So you could have when someone got married, or when someone got divorced, or when someone got widowed. So you'd have all three of those entries when they got married, when they got divorced, and when they got remarried, and then say widowed. Um, if you just had the patient dimension, you would have just the last entry. So you would have if the last entry say widowed. Um, but then you wouldn't know when they got married and when they got uh, divorced or when they got remarried. Um, but So by putting them in the observation fact, then you can keep a record of um, those time events. Uh, but some things such as like birth date and death date occur only once, so those would be typically in the patient dimension. And so uh, there is the race in the patient dimension, which you could also use. But then the so but then if you had multiple races, then um, you might want to put that in the observation fact to keep a rec so you could have multiple race, multiple entries. Okay. So, so the visit dimension table um, contains uh, like one uh, uh, encounter number associated to multiple different uh, patient uh, observation facts. So if you went into the emergency room, you'd have, or like inpatient, you'd have one encounter number and then all of those records for that visit would be uh, multiple different uh, entries, but they would all have the same patient number. So then you could go a query and say, okay, during this visit, uh, what was their A1C uh, during that uh, time? Um, did it go up or down? They might be like, they may have done a couple of queries of it. So, and so uh, just another example of how to use modifiers. Uh, if you, uh, could do modifiers of smokers, whether it's heavy, light, or moderate. Okay. Um, and so in the modifier CD, we have, there's also the M apply path and the exclusion CD, which uh, just wants you to know that they're there, uh, but for another talk, it's, it's a little complicated. Uh, okay, so let's just jump over to. So when you, when we're doing queries with modifiers, when you drag it over, say light, it would it would it knows that the parent is smoker, and that uh, the entry the modifier is light. So that's why 
in the queer, in the group one, you see smoker uh, with um, older, and then um, in brackets is light, which represents that um, it's a modifier. And so, um, and then this just shows you what the uh, concept CV would look like when dragging in the query tool, where you have like the key, which is the custom metadata uh, for smoking status. Uh, the visual attribute, uh, C base code, which is uh, LCS ITV2 smoker, that's the main code. But then underneath that, you have the modifier. And then in the modifier, you represent uh, like the name, the, so the C full name, which has like flash light, flash, and then the name of light. And so, and then the applied path associated to it. Um, so I think, we, uh, so this kind of goes a little bit, uh, how the actual select statement would re uh, be represented when you're doing the query for the uh, modifiers. So, okay, I'm a good time. So I know there's a lot of information right there, but that's uh, kind of how the ITB2 ontology is kind of set up, how the observation fact is done, the metadata, so on the um, bioontology, there's um, lots of different ontologies that are existing. Some uh, you might be familiar with, like CPT codes, ICD-10 codes. But there's also other specialized ones for cancer, for um, surgical stuff, et cetera. So we developed a tool uh, that would extract the data from that ontology and then load it into I2B2. So you can create, you go to bioontology, you figure out the ontology you're interested in, and then you run the NCBO extraction tool to basically extract the ontology and load it, create a CSV file that you can load into the metadata. So this is, so it's a bioportal.bioontology.org. And so underneath that, there's a lot of different ontologies. We're looking at an example of what the ICD-10 is. And they also have show you the, it would be the very similar to, uh, once you extract it and load it into ITB2, the um, uh, directory structure on the left-hand side would, that's what it should look like in ITB2. So you have disease of the circulatory systems, and if you click on that little plus, you'll see all the children underneath that, and the same thing should occur in the ITB2 when you create that ontology. Uh, so on the community website, we have the NCBO extraction tool, uh, version two. And so this one is where you would download, it's a Java application. So you, uh, there's like uh, three different, ent like you first run it to load, grab the Soror data, and then you can, then you run it again on that raw data to create the ITB2 uh, ontology. And then you can also specify how like long the C full name is, whether you want longer C full names or shorter C full names. But there's documentation about how that all is represented. Okay. And th this is what I, uh, so you basically, how it works is you extract the data, kind of creates a, a semi-extracted uh, data, and then it converts it into a format that can be loaded into ITB2. And then once it gets loaded into ITB2, it should look identical to the one that was on the bio portal, such as in here. So that's one of the tools. The other tool that we have um, in, the, in the workbench is to uh, do, um, ontology mapping. So for example, let's say your lab uh, or custom lab, uh, so it's um, um, whatever lab, uh, like uh, sodium. And then sodium uh, would be associated to lab uh, colon one, two. But then the ontology that you want to use is based on LOINC. So th these mapping tools help you map your local code to, uh, um, sodium to what the LOIN code is for sodium. <clears throat> and so, uh, so that's where this mapping tool is. You have your local ontology, and then 
your unmapped terms on the right hand side where you can do a search by name. And so on the, uh, so then you search for something like uh, sodium uh, by name, and then in there, then you can uh, then you can drag it across the, into the ontology, and then it will do the mapping for you. Okay, so and then this just uh, shows you the number of terms in it. Uh, Need to be uh, unmapped terms, map terms. And this is also on the ITIL. So as you can see in the the little uh, gr green and the purple flags, some of those, those are the ones that were dragged over. And so the blue means exact, green is approximate, uh, yellow is combined, and purple is none. Uh, so gives you a visual representation of that. Okay. Uh, and then you can add new mappings. Uh, move things around, uh, or if you just want to unmap it, you can right-click on it, unmap, okay. and then, then you can get a list of all the unmapped ones, and then uh, then you can do searches uh, by name, uh, et cetera, um, and this just just show you, you can drag from the right-hand side to the left-hand side, and then it would be populate it into that ontology. And then there's a way to, and then you can just verify to make sure. And so this is all part of the map term viewer tool. And then you can do searches by code and searches by name. Okay. Uh, so what's missing from this tool? I mean, the order map I'm asking, uh, let's see is something that would be useful and then. Uh, it uses the UML's metadata API. So uh, sometimes that changes, but uh, that's the, uh, and so, uh, and this is the work on the automated mapping tool. Okay, and then, uh, okay, so then, uh, let's see. And the, the, this is just the workflow of it. Is there any third party mappings? Uh, is it mapped to UMLS? Uh, then you, if it's not, and either of those, then it's mapped manually. But if it is, then we try to automatically map it. And then, so there's an export import integration tool of it. So, and then we had done a little bit of mapping ICD-9 to ICD-10 code, so this kind of represents uh, that type of mapping. But so the first, uh, so on the wiki page we have both the NC NCBO ontology tool and then the mapping tool, um, and this is the link to both of them. And then within the ITB to work uh, workbench. Uh, so the, uh, these tools would be tools that you have to add into the workbench, but built into the workbench, you have the ability to modify some of the ontologies. And so you find the ontology, provide the visual attribute set to E, and then you can kind of see because it has a little uh, green pencil. And so if it is, then you can um, either <clears throat> edit it or you can remove it. You can change it, uh, add a new folder, item or container. The ones that have a little uh, lock on it means that they're not editable. And so when you uh, bring it up, then you can just change the tooltip. Uh, you can uh, change the concept or the base code. Uh, and then the uh, soft system CD. The ones that have an historic associated to it are primary keys. So the uh, primary uh, required fields. So those have to have a value. Okay. And so this just shows adding a new term. Okay. And, uh, okay, so so let me just show you uh, on the ITV2 website. Uh, 
or log in as demo. So this, these are the ones that contain the, in the C table access. Um, uh, under gen genomic demographics, clinical trials, diagnosis. So once you, for example, go to ICD-10 ICD diagnosis, open that up. I'm not sure why it's taking so long. Let me just try re-logging it and back in on that. I'm saying it's my diagnosis. Yeah, I'll take a look at the. So if we open up diagnosis. This is ICD-9. So under so this would be a CH level of one, and then this is a CH level of two. And then as we see, we actually do have modifiers. So if you were to drag over a misdiagnosis, as you see it, the parent was circulatory systems. And then within that, you have the child of, uh, you have the modifier of a admit diagnosis. But if we would take a look at a laboratory test, let's say chemistry, blood gases, uh, any of these like CO2, once we dragged it over, notice how we got those pop-up windows. So this is the C metadata XML. And so in here, it represents that it has multiple different units. So, and because of that, it would be the value. So, so the value would be like right now, less than 100 uh, millimeters. Or you could say, okay, uh, millimeters uh, HG and it would be 100. So, it'd be, so if we did that, it'd say 100, uh, get that here. Hmm. okay, I have to look at that one too. I don't know why, it, it should have uh, put the MMHG to that, uh, but <clears throat> for some reason, to uh, default to millimeter. But anyway, so it would say that the PO2, PO2 would be less than 100 millimeters. And so, so this is the C metadata. Um, so, and that's the modifiers. And so if we take a look at the bio, bio ontology, bio portal, bio ontology. So this is the main page of it. Then if you, so they have 719 different ontologies in here. And so, let's see. Oh, browse ontology. Uh, browse all ontologies. And so then, so you have like the CPT ontology, uh, RX norm, SNOMED, uh, national uh, drug data file, uh, radiology, lexicon, uh, pathway ontology, human disease ontology. So if we take a look at this ontology, and then if you look at the uh, bioportal PURL, So, um, yeah. So some of them just have one parent and then lots of children under it, and that this is one of those. It because as you see, it doesn't have uh, child ontologies under it. So I'm going to go back to a different one. Really. Let's take a look at the CPT, that one. And then we take a uh, look at that ontology. Okay, so underneath here, so we have all these children underneath the CPT, like category two, category three. And so, and then underneath category two, you have all these other children. So if we were using the NCBO tool, you would 
uh, specify this URL, uh, Bioportal Bioontology Ontology slash CPT, as the as the parent URL, and then it would drag it would extract all of the children underneath that and create the ITB2 ontology. Uh, the Bioontology uh, website do, does have a couple of. Uh, I, uh, So if you go to i2b2bioontology.org, uh, they do have uh, some ontologies already uh, created, and you can just download them and extract them uh, directly into your database. So some people have already kind of extracted some, uh, and these are the names associated to them, and then this is the file. Um, like there's some ICD-10s already done, some SNOMED, uh, NDFRT, so it would save you some time of not having to run through the whole tool, extract it. You can just grab, uh, grab it. You can also look at the date that they were created. So some that are like say 2011, there's probably been updated ontologies in the bioontology. So you might want to grab the latest one. But then you could also uh, uh, contact support at bioontology and give them your file they created so that they can update this. And so other people can utilize it. Uh, so I think we'll, we'll basically have enough time for some questions if need be. Um, like I said, I know this was recorded, so, and there was lots of information talked about in this one hour presentation, but it gives you an idea of what you can do with the I2B2 ontology and how you can utilize it and how you can use the metadata. Um, the C metadata XML, how you can use modifiers, how you can utilize other ontologies that people have already created, um, how, you, how you create your own ontology uh, using the CH levels, et cetera, and things like that. Um, so, uh, okay, so are there any questions out there? I, I'm trying to answer the questions as they're coming through, but uh, if not, then um, I think this concludes the ontology uh, uh, presentation on, for beginners. Uh, and I hope I hope it was helpful to everyone. Okay, uh, Rudy, are you still there? Okay, thank you everyone.